Welcome to this episode of Living on the Edge with your host, Russ and Nate Moyer. Well, hello. Welcome to the Prophetic Edge. It's our pleasure to be with you. I'm Patty. My name is Alex. And we're here. Uh, Dr. Russ and Pastor Mabe are in Ecuador, so we bless them as they're traveling. And so it's a wonderful privilege to be with you today. And today, the Lord has put upon our hearts to talk about exhortation and encouragement. Does anybody need a little encouragement out there? And I, I can tell you that today, in the body of Christ and in the world and everywhere you go, just about everyone that you meet needs some encouragement. Recently we were traveling and, and ourselves and as we were um, going and visiting family and just taking an opportunity uh, on vacation, one of the things that really uh, struck home to us is, wow, there's so many people in need of encouragement today. I find that when the Holy Spirit places exhortation, edification, and uh, encouragement upon your hearts, it's like a well of water that's just poured out upon dry and thirsty land. Because the enemy's strategy in the day that we're living in is to dry up life, is to take life and to make it parched, to make it what? Like a desert. Because when he makes it like a desert, what happens? Nothing grows. It becomes that that is desolate. And that is the plan of the enemy for the church and also for those of you that may not know the Lord Jesus Christ. It is his plan to make you even at a place where you're just devoid of encouragement. But know that even in this day and in this hour, it is the Lord's will that he encourages you. Why? Because he thinks highly of you. He loves you. And he desires to water you, to make you feel good on the inside, and to bless you, to impart life, and to impart hope. So today we're going to flow in that stream. And we're going to flow in the prophetic today because the prophetic spirit is the testimony of Jesus. And here at Eagle Worldwide, that's part of our DNA is to flow in prophecy. And so we want you to be blessed by the Spirit of the Lord. So are you ready to be encouraged today? Because we're going to flow in that. And you know, as we're, we're seeking to prophesy and to be on that prophetic edge, part of being in the prophetic is encouragement. 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says, But one who prophesies speaks to men for edification and exhortation and consolation. So we're building up, we're encouraging, we're, we're consoling, and a big part of the, the Word of God, the prophetic, active in your life, through you to other people, is that gift of exhortation and encouragement. So I just want to read the gift of, of exhortation. What does exhort mean? to strongly encourage or urge someone to do something. Encourage, urge, call on, press, charge. And do you feel the, the spirit churning in there that there actually is an urgency to get out that message and, and the word of encouragement as it comes to build up and to edify. This is something that the spirit is longing to do right now in this season. And as my husband was saying, those, those wells of living water that are inside of us, the Lord is longing to have that released inside of us for our own encouragement, but also for all those who are around us. You know, in, in Samuel, David had to encourage himself. Um. Samuel 36 says, David was greatly distressed. And you know, if, if David, this man that was known as a man after God's own heart, was greatly distressed, and he had to encourage himself in the Lord, he strengthened himself. And this is something that comes from exhortation, is a strengthening. How have you seen that work in your own life where you had to strengthen yourself in the Lord? I would use the word essential. I would use that word very emphatically because 
It is essential. Keep in mind that as believers in this world, we are going against the stream. So the stream of the world is that that is opposite to the flow of the Holy Spirit. So there needs to be something that would be an impetus. So when you think of a salmon, which you as a believer are called to be, when you think of the salmon going against the stream, there needs to be what? Some sort of impetus, some sort of strength. And the salmon pushes forward. I find that God designs exhortation, edification, comfort to be impetus or to be strength. It causes you to have strength to go forward. When there's a word of exhortation, the Bible describes it like words fitly spoken and apples of apples of silver in baskets of gold. It's something that's precious. It lifts burdens. It imparts strength. It imparts hope. And when you have that downloaded to you from the Spirit of the Lord, strength comes with that. And David said he commanded himself to be exhorted. He spoke to himself. And when you do that, you're able to go forward with strength. So exhortation, encouragement is synonymous with strength. And you know, as we are, are building ourselves up, as we build ourselves up, you know, David said, bless the Lord, O my soul. And, you know, you've probably heard that phrase many times that people would say, you're crazy if you're talking to yourself, or you're crazy if you're not talking to yourself, according to what a Christian believes. So we need to be talking to ourselves, mm -hmm. strengthening ourselves, building ourselves up. And how do we do that? We release that word of the Lord that is in us. We release that, that those prophetic declarations of who we are and who God is. And as David strengthened himself in the Lord, what was he doing? He was enabling himself to really propel himself into his prophetic destiny. And I know that in your heart, there's a longing inside of you to really do the will of God, walk in the will of God, know the will of God. And as we even speak to ourselves, and we begin to recall what the Lord has done in our lives, this is a way that that gift of encouragement can operate. What has God done? What did he do in the past? When I had that circumstance, when I had that challenge, what, how did he meet me in that place? And, you know, uh, as you said, the spirit of, of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. And so we have to recount these testimonies of what Christ has done. You know, in Hebrews chapter 11, we call it the, the hallmark of, of faith. And Paul begins to recount what these great men and women of God have done, but really it was Christ in them, the hope of glory. And he just begins to describe through faith, Abraham did this, through faith, Enoch did this, through faith, through faith, through faith. And, and that releasing even the declarations uh, through faith of what God has done builds up, strengthens, and encourages us. And I, I find thinking of, of that particular flow that my wife was just talking about, what about frequency? The Bible talks about to encourage one another daily while it's called today. So there are things that we do daily. We eat daily. Why? Because we want life. Some of you take vitamins daily because you want to be healthy. Some of you exercise daily because you want to be ones that have a healthy body so that you're not involved with sickness and disease. So it's of a of an important nature it is daily what about exhortation the Bible encourages us to exhort one another daily so to me when there's a frequency applied to that word daily then God is saying something that this is a priority that I want you to consider. I want you to exhort your friend. I want you to exhort your mother. I want you to exhort your people you work with. Exhort your spouse. Exhort yourself daily while it is called today. Why? Because there is life in that more abundantly. When we obey even the will and plan of God, the more that we align ourselves with God's way of living life and and doing life, the better things go for us. And that's you that are Christians, you that aren't. However much you align yourself in agreement with God, life goes well for you. So I want to implant that even in this conversation today. Daily encourage one another. Con 
encourage yourself. I want to encourage you, when you're getting up in the morning and you're about to shave, look in the mirror and begin to prophesy over yourself. Begin to encourage yourself. Ladies, when you're putting on your makeup, begin to speak life and encourage yourself. Why? Because God wants you to live in life. What kind of life? Life more abundantly. It's not something where he just wants us to barely get along, barely survive, but it is something he wants us to flow in and move in and you have a part in that. And as you sow into your life and into the lives of others, you begin this whole process of sowing which involves and incorporates also reaping it's catchy when you begin to encourage others it will come back to you and you create an atmosphere have you ever been in the environment where everybody's negative and everybody's tearing everybody down and people begin to close up and they harden up their hearts and it becomes an uncomfortable atmosphere it becomes in an atmosphere where you're just wanting to get out of there but that is not the plan of the Lord so you change your atmosphere in your life by speaking words of exhortation edification and comfort I find even when I'm on the phone talking to people and business agencies government agencies if they've done a good job I'll tell them and you can hear the response of gratitude why because I'm speaking life even to somebody that I don't really know over a minor thing how much more when you get that word from the Lord and you impart life to somebody even as he inspires it it is burning on the heart of the Lord for you and I to encourage those around us and you know as as the Lord is really tuning our ear we're gonna begin to hear those words that he has for someone else maybe you're gonna go into a restaurant and the Lord will drop something in your spirit for the the server for someone there because you know as we begin to really walk in the spirit and live in the spirit and and have that attitude lord i want you to speak through me i want you to use me mm -hmm. he's going to <clears throat> really uh delights to to download that prophetic revelation and many 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 of the revelations that the lord will bring to you is for someone else's encouragement mm -hmm. i know we've had quite a number of incidences going into to some restaurants or, or public places where the lord just shot that word of encouragement in our hearts for someone else why don't you share about one of those times there's a number of those times and I find that I get encouraged when I'm a part of that encouragement from the Holy Spirit what do I mean well I find just in living day-to-day -day life I don't necessarily have to go to Africa to preach the gospel although he might call you there but to me, go into all the world, or as you're going into all the world, preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news. The other day, recently, doing a very routine part of life, went into Service Ontario, had to get the little registration sticker for my license plate. I was waiting for the clerk behind the counter in order to um, finish with the person ahead of me and for me to go up and, and to get my, my sticker for my license plate. Common, everyday thing closed my eyes Lord do you have a word for this person instantly he gave me a vision and if you're open to God he'll give you the vision for them why because he longs to speak to them they are precious jewels you are a precious jewel in the hand of the Lord you might not be perfect but you're a jewel worth great value to him so I got this vision uh, for this woman she and I uh, uh, did business as far as transaction to get my little sticker for the license plate. Then I introduced myself. I told her I was a Christian and I said, the Lord's, I believe the Lord's given me a word for you. And I'm just going to share a little bit of it. It doesn't have to be complicated, but I saw a train. And I saw a train that was driving through a tunnel that had been carved out in a mountain. The train was on the track and it was going into a dark place, a tunnel. But of course, on the other side, I knew there was light. And so the Lord gave me the understanding. And just very simply, I told her that you're going through a time of transition, but the Lord says you're on track. Mm 
-hmm. Now this woman was on track and I said you're going through a time of transition and you don't understand every part of this decision. You, you're lacking knowledge. You don't have all the information that you need. But the Lord wants to tell you that you are on track. And as you go through and as you get through the other side, there's, He's going to impart light to you, knowledge to you. Some of the things that you've been missing in terms of your understanding, He's going to impart that to you. Well, I, I just gave that short, simple word to this lady. And then I asked her about it and her face began to light up. And she, I said, does that make sense? She's like, yes, but why? Because the Holy Spirit wanted to, what, encourage her, speak exhortation, edification, and comfort. Now, what would that mean for her? It means that God knows me. God understands me. He's aware of me. I didn't know he was with me. I just felt like I was going through this thing. I didn't understand. I didn't have all the answers. But he sent this person in order to speak to me. So an awareness of God and an encouragement from the Lord was brought to her life that changed her day, changed her countenance, changed her disposition. And she was blessed by the Holy Spirit. And I left being fed. Why? Because Jesus said, my will is to do the will of him. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. The Lord put that upon my heart and it was meat for my soul. I got so blessed in sharing this word for this woman. I felt joy. That whole thing of sowing and reaping took place. I sowed the word as he gave it. I reap back joy. And I find different places that I go to. The Lord will download words to me. And people get blessed. But it also gives me insight into who he is. Because when I'm open to hear the word that he wants to speak to people. And I'm speaking mainly in this context about prophetic evangelism reaching out to the lost as the Lord gives you words and you know something they're not usually words that would tear them down they're not words that would harm them but they're words what exhortation edification and comfort but when those words are spoken there's a release of his spirit and the vehicle is the word going forth and now it is touching their their understanding as well as their spirit and something matures inside of them and it's life and it's an impartation and I've seen people get excited I've seen people begin to smile I see people that their day is changed why because they are hungry they have been created to receive what encouragement life is in encouragement and they're looking for life so when people not knowing the Lord or wherever place you're at are out searching for things and maybe certain things that you wouldn't want to even tell others that you've done or searching in avenues of lust and sin and things you haven't been proud of. There's something that you're looking for and that's life and that more abundantly. But it's found in the flow of God. It's found in getting to know him. And he, again, in the midst of that, brings you encouragement. And you know, it's it's really having that heart and being ready to receive that word, receive that word of encouragement for someone else. And and another aspect of this exhortation is to really compel or to urge someone. And this is something that we are hearing more and more and more and more in this hour. That this is a very urgent hour. Yes. People are they they understand that when they look at the news, when they hear about the Christians that are persecuting, or they hear about the dangers, or the earthquakes, or the the things that are are going on. So in this time that we're living, perilous times, people are are in a sense where they need to be encouraged, but they're also it's an urgent hour, and so the compelling word of the Lord is going to come forth because you know the Spirit of God is urging mm -hmm. people the Spirit of God is calling people and I really believe that um, as we're really seeking to get in God's presence and hear him and understand what he's saying right now then we're going to feel that urgency in our spirit mm -hmm. and I know that's something that we've been talking about that the Lord is really wanting to have his church 
That's you and me. Be active. Yes. Releasing his voice. Because there is a compelling, a compelling voice of the Lord right now that's coming forth and, and really asking and longing, longing for people to come to him. That's what the Lord is doing is he's releasing that call. And so as we are uh, really tuning our hearts in, I believe an urgency is coming forth. And that's part of that exhortation because you're calling people in and really calling them and being used as the voice of the Lord to compel them to come in. Recently, on that note of urgent or urgency, the Lord gave me a, a, a vision, and I find oftentimes He speaks to me in visions. He speaks to us in a number of different ways, so if you don't get visions, He'll speak to you in a way that you can receive. If you get visions, run with it, run with that vision. But I saw a city, un, not unlike probably your own city, you watching here today, but instead of seeing the roadways as normal asphalt, I saw even like canals. It was like a, a flood had gone through. And the flood was representative even of the Spirit of the Lord. And the Lord would say that even in this hour, I'm causing my Spirit even to be out in the streets. For the Lord says that I'm out in the streets. I'm with those that don't know me. I'm with those that are even in the marketplace. I'm with those that are in your school. I'm with those that are living life, your neighbors, even those around you. And the Lord says that if you want to find me, it's even out in the streets, even out with the lost. For I desire desire to pour my river and my stream even out upon those that are lost. And no, says the Lord, that even, yea, I will give you even words to speak even in this hour to your neighbors, to your teachers, to your bosses, to people out in service, Ontario. It doesn't matter. I will release even in this hour words of encouragement to speak even to those that are lost and dying that you are rubbing shoulders with to lift them up, to build them up. Why? Because I hug them through you. Why? Because I love them through you. I want to release rivers of my spirit, even in the streets of your area, says the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we just want to pray a prayer of impartation over you. We believe that this is a season where the Lord wants to encourage you. He wants to build you up. He wants to even activate you in a way to release life over yourself and in yourself so that you're encouraging yourself and to make you to be that vehicle of encouragement and exhortation to others so that all that you meet are going to be filled with faith, filled with courage, filled with strength, and that when you come into the room that the light of God has just been released into that place. We were recently sitting with a friend of ours. She's a, a missionary in another country and, and just sitting and talking about what God had been doing in her life. And twice in the last uh, couple of weeks, somebody had said to her, to her I, it's, I just see light coming all out of you. And that's what the Lord wants to do is to release his light out of you. So we just want to pray that prayer of impartation that you would receive even in that gift of of the prophetic, that special gift of exhortation to encourage and to release life over all those around you. Why don't you go ahead and pray that prayer of impartation? Now, you might be at a point where you're wondering, yeah, maybe you can prophesy or maybe this one here, but not me. Is it God's will? But the Bible says, and we have to found this on the word, the Bible says in, in, in 1 Corinthians that you all may prophesy. Now, words of exhortation, edification, and comfort, I say emphatically, look it up in the word in 1 Corinthians, you all may prophesy. That means it's God's will to use you in that vein. So keeping his word in mind, I want you to open up your heart now. I want you to open up your spirit and close your eyes and just get ready for the impartation, even from the spirit of the Lord, because he loves you and he loves those around you. Let's pray. You, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up to you my brother. 
I lift up to you my sister. Father, I'm asking, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that there would be a release now. Father, I'm declaring, Father, even a birthing inside the spirit. I'm declaring a birthing inside the heart. I'm declaring, Father, that there is a river whose streams make glad the city of our God. I'm declaring now that there's a river of revelation pouring out upon this one listening. I'm declaring that there is revelation revelation being poured out. I'm declaring, Father, that their tongue is like the tongue of a ready writer. Father, I'm declaring that your word is going forward with signs and wonders following, that your word is bringing encouragement, it's bringing exhortation, it's imparting life, it's opening up the realms of encouragement, even, Father, to those that are in my brother's path and in my sister's path. So let there be a release now, we pray, and a download. We're thanking you for it. Prophetic encouragement, exhortation, and comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I, th I thank you for a fresh impartation mm -hmm. of hope. Lord, we just release hope over each and every one that is listening today. You, and Father, I thank you for that lifting in mm -hmm. their spirits, that their spirits would be buoyed up, Lord, that it would be floating, as it were, just on the wings of your spirit. And so, Father, we thank you, God, for a lifting, a lifting up in the name of Jesus, and that a spirit of encouragement would be released in yes. Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, we want to invite you out this summer at Eagle Worldwide Ministries in Hamilton, Ontario, which is Copetown, Ontario. We want to invite you out to our summer camp this summer. You do not want to miss this. You do not want to miss what God is doing, what God is saying. Why? Because we want to hear the Spirit of the Lord and we're a cutting-edge prophetic ministry. Under the, the, the guidance and under the leadership of, of the Apostle Dr. Russ Moyer and Pastor Maeve Moyer. So why don't you share with us some of these dates? Well, summer camp starts July the 9th and it runs all the way through September 2nd. Every night we're there and there's really wonderful, amazing speakers from all over North America. And these are people that truly move in the Spirit of God. They mm -hmm. truly move with that prophetic anointing, with that exhortation and encouragement anointing. And I'm telling you, every every year we hear so many testimonies of how people's lives have been truly changed. And so just some of the, the speakers that you might have heard of, Joshua Mills and uh, um, uh, Fateen will be with us this year, as well as Gail Sheehan, and especially, speaking about the prophetic, the School of the Prophets. The School of the Prophets has been a life-changing event for me and will be for you if you desire to flow in prophecy. So at the camp in Copetown, Ontario, August 8th to the 15th, 2015 School of the Prophets. Look on our website, Eagle Worldwide Ministries. Google that, look it up, get on the website, get all the information. As well, the School of Freedom and Transformation, July 19th through the 24th. This school focuses on freedom ministry, deliverance ministry, inner healing ministry, and truly, truly is life changing. So we just want to bless you now. We're going to sign off at this point, and we bless you, and we encourage you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this episode of Living on the Edge. Eagle Worldwide Ministries offers a variety of resources to strengthen the body of Christ. For more information, check our website at www.eagleworldwide.com or call us at 905-308-9991. God bless.